Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you. Alright, this one's called Accessory Wars. Wars, 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 wars. Alright, and what this one's about, it was a little echo there. Uh, that actually, oh, it's so echoey in here, I don't know why. That was, that was very realistic, wasn't it? But what this one has to do with, okay, is people that buy a bunch of random guns and they don't actually wind up like fully kitting out each gun before they move on to buying something else. Like I know it's easy to kind of go, whoa, a new gun. And also in this video, we'll sort of get into, well, what order should you go in? Like what's the most important accessory to put on your gun first? And what, what are the most important things and what order should you kind of try to strive to go in to make sure you're getting kitted out sort of in the right order? Because you know, sometimes it, you may not be able to afford to do everything all at once, so you might have to do it in, in little bats and, and you know batches, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll kind of get into this a little bit. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to thank our friends at Arkin Optics. Uh, really great optics at a wonderful price. We've done a lot of testing on their stuff. I've been very impressed with the quality. Lots of really great features put into these optics. The reticles are amazing. The owner of the company is a former Navy SEAL sniper, really good dude, and he's put a lot of real world experience into his reticles and the designs. So lots of good experience there. Really great people. Check them out, Arkin Optics, and tell them we sent you. Okay, so we're gonna get into this one a little bit. Um, and again, I, I, we've already been cutting a few gripes today, and one thing that we, we've sort of had as a reoccurring theme is that some of these things I'm guilty of, and that's what I sort was of say that. <laughs> brought this into conversation, was that I was ordering some flashlights earlier, and I was thinking, well, you know, I've got so many different guns that I, that I use and stage up in different places, and it's like, man, I've had this gun for five years, and I don't even have a freaking sling or a flashlight on it, or, or you know... And you begin to feel irresponsible that you haven't really kitted the, the gun out in the proper way you need it to. The gun sitting to there to serve too. its purpose for what you're intending to use it. That gun sitting there, that poor little gun's going, Why? Why have you neglected me? You don't even shoot me anymore. That's right. How are you going to use me for life and liberty? <laughs> oh my God. Yep. They really say that. I mean, our guns do speak to us. I can't tell you how many times. You know, I've had that moment, right, where I'm at a gun shop or something, and I see a gun, and I'm like, ooh. Squirrel! Yeah, squirrel. I have that ADD moment, and I and I grab the gun, I buy it, and all of a sudden I'm home, and then I realize, wow, that's another rifle or shotgun that needs <clears throat> a, an optic, a light, a sling, accessories, now, what have you. Now look, I will say, I try to help Eric out and keep him happy with his, or keep his wife happy, I should say by seeing certain guns before he does and trying to hide them in the gun store and keep him That's away right. from them, but it doesn't always work out. Never. And they always follow him home. They do. They're like puppies. They are. I, They're I all like, like puppies, puppies and they follow me home. Now, okay, so the crux of the gripe. Now you've got a new rifle or whatever, and it's really easy for us, right, to, to we tend to... And, I, and I'm not the only one that's guilty of it. I know a lot of y'all are guilty of it. it. It's just natural, right? Someone to go, oh man, I always wanted that new, whatever the gun might be, and then you buy another gun, but then you've got like a pile of other guns that aren't even kitted out, like they don't have optics yet, or slings, yep. or whatever. Or let's say it's a weird caliber and you just never got around to buying some extra ammo, or maybe um, it's a gun that requires a very specific and special magazine, mm -hmm. and maybe the gun only came with one mag and you never got around to ordering extra magazines. There's so many things mm -hmm. like that that we run into. So what would be the order of importance that we would want to associate with accessorizing to the point where we go, okay, we've got this, let's just say we've got a rifle with maybe some uh, Magpul M buses on it. Uh, maybe let's just say for the purpose of this video, we've got an AR with a, you know, Magpul stock, Magpul grip, and let's just say a decent forend or something. And, you know, but for the most part, she's naked, right? Not a lot going on. No sling, no optic, no light, no magazines. What have you? No right? magazines. What the would, horror. What would be the order of importance we'd probably well, want to? Well, get geez, into? man. No magazines. Obviously, you need a way to feed that rifle. Right. So I mean, magazines is obviously but, pretty important. Yeah, most of the time, I mean, rifle's going to come with at least one magazine. But yes, correct. Spare mags. All right. Yeah. Now I think spare mags is probably most important. All right. So a sling. All right. I would say order of importance. All right. Slings are cheap. 
There's no reason if you're spending yeah. six or seven hundred dollars on a rifle that you can't buy a twenty or thirty dollar sling to throw yeah. on it. Or if you're at the Army Navy store, all right, go over and find the pile of GI slings that they have laying there for like five barking dollars and buy one and yeah. use it. It's simple. Right. Put a sling on your rifle. Yes. Yeah, that, even if you just run in backup sites, I mean look. The Inbus Pros, for instance, some of the higher end ARs might come with a with a, a Inbus Pro. Usually not. That's kind of an upgrade. Yeah, those that, sites are kind of expensive. Yeah, but like a couple hundred bucks. To say that you had Inbus Pros on the thing, and you don't have you know figured out what optic you want to run yet. Inbus Pros can be zeroed quite well, mm -hmm. and they're very capable iron sights. Mm -hmm. You need a sling on the dang rifle, okay? Put a sling on the rifle. It's so important to have a sling. It took me a long time. You know, sometimes. You just have have got to just put your foot down and go, you know what, this hunting rifle, this this Life and Liberty gun, whatever the case may be, that my favorite shotgun, you want to have a sling on your shotgun or your rifle. It's just super important. All right. Look, I have an analogy that I think you'll enjoy. All right, any of you out there with families and small children will probably associate with this quite well. All right, so Eric is to slings on his rifles like my kids are to clean up their toys that they've been playing with all right yeah. so instead of going throughout the day and playing with something and then putting it away and then getting something else out and then putting it away they just let it kind of pile up right and then it's just giant pain in the butt you know on them and me as a parent trying to get them to take care of all their mess right so he'll like allow all these rifles to go slingless and then come down to it, you know, one day it's like, oh my God, I got to drop $500 on slings yeah. just to accessorize these rifles that I've been holding off on for like five years, you know, I, or whatever. <laughs> I would suggest, you know, if, if there's a, a firearm that you have, let's just say not only a, a, a literal capital investment in, you know, yes. in the form of money, but also let's just say a tactical investment in, say that, you know, you've purchased a pistol or shotgun mm -hmm. or rifle with the intention of using it for home defense purposes or a road gun or whatever purpose that you may have that, that mm -hmm. is for your needs, right? Probably important before you buy anything else, before, you know, whatever, you probably want to go ahead and, you know, get a sling, get some extra mags, get a little ammo, you know, probably a good red dot or scope. Now, now look, in terms of your optic, now that's going to really depend on what the intended purpose of the gun is. I mean, is it a close range only type of thing? Home defense? You're only shooting across the living room potentially or down a hallway. We don't need a, you know, 10 power optic to shoot, you know, five yards or seven mm -hmm. yards or 10 yards. So choosing the proper optic for the right situation mm -hmm. is obviously important. And that's not really what this video is about per se, but I would say an optic would mm -hmm. probably be the next thing you might want to, anything that can give you a little bit of an edge. Mm -hmm. in a low light environment. Now, obviously, Inbus Pros, as great of a sight as it is, um, if it, we're talking a bump in the night, well, then obviously you're starting to get into a very difficult situation. You're going to have a hard time seeing mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, those sights uh, in, in the dark or whatever. So a red dot or something would be a great option. Something with a shake-awake feature. I do like the shake-awake stuff uh, quite a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, that technology is pretty cool. Or running like the, the Comp M5s, like the aim points, you can dial them down kind of low where they're not super bright when you pick them up in, in, in the dark. And the batteries last like, you know, a year and a half or some crazy amount, you know. Um, I, so w we went into this video thinking mostly about home and self-defense, right? Because, I mean, let's face it, a lot of people these days, they're buying firearms for that purpose. That's where most and people's minds are at. Especially in this world that we're living in right now, okay? All yeah. the craziness going on. All right, so, yes, if you have a firearm set up for a specific purpose, yes, you're going to need specific accessories for that purpose. All right, if you've got a, a long-barreled AR, okay, that you're shooting semi-auto precision matches with, do you need to accessorize it with a flashlight? Most likely not. Probably right? not. But do you need a higher power, like variable power optic? to shoot long range with that at these matches, yes. Or do you right. want a level on there, a bubble level, to help yes. you keep the gun right. you know, level? Yeah. But if we're talking about self-defense guns, okay, which is kind of what the premise of this video is really about. It really um, is. And we're specifically talking about rifles because they're the, the firearms that need the most accessories to function as intended and be the most useful in the situation that you might find yourself in. All right? That so, is correct. All right, you think, all right, I want... A high, a high quality optic 
that'll gather a lot of light in a low light situation because let's face it, all right, most of the bad things that happen are gonna happen to you probably at home, at night, right? I mean, bad guys come out at night. I mean, that's kind of the old thing, right? So you need a good flashlight, you need a good optic on there, all right? Yeah. And people will cheap out a lot of times, all right? They'll buy like a really fancy rifle, and we've talked about this before, and they'll put like an NC star on top of it. Yeah. There's no way that I would bet my life on one of those optics. You just don't do it. They're novelty items. It's like, put it on an airsoft gun and throw it away. Throw it down the hallway. Yeah. But, like, flashlights, too. Uh, I yeah, mean, would you really trust your life, too? I mean, that's the question, too. Like, yeah. when you buy a piece of gear, ask yourself, like, in the moment that I need it the most, is this something that I really trust? Yes. Is it really what you trust? I mean, like, for me, I've been a humongous fan of the Surefire 340 and 640. I love yeah. the dual fuel yes. Surefires yes. for flashlights. And they are fantastic lights, and they do represent a considerable investment. However, for defensive purposes, I love the 640 dual mm. fuel. It is a great light. And look, this is what prompted this video. I just ordered a 640 to put on my house gun because I don't really, I don't have a good flashlight. And so I ordered that 640, and I've got 340s on some of my PCCs, mm. the little short single cell. I wanted the double cell. Mm -hmm for a couple of reasons. One reason is because with the new articulating mount from Surefire, you know, you can really get that thing nice and tight and really articulate it exactly where you want on either side, which is always great, but I like the dual fuel as well because it's a little bit longer. It actually puts that light out a little further because of the added length. So you get a lot less of that kind of halo. Mm -hmm. So like if you, just because, of, let's just say the limitations of your rifle you're mounting it on, if you've got to mount it a little further back on an M-lock slot or something, and then you've got a little bit of barrel sticking out, that, that short single cell is gonna throw a little bit of a shadow and a halo, mm -hmm. right? Or say you're running a suppressor, now that, that's gonna get a little more complicated if you've got that longer suppressor, you're gonna get a little bit of that shadow. But I do like the 1500 lumen 640 because it's longer and it throws less of that shadow and gosh, it's just more output. It's 1500 lumens of get out of here. So, and it's got a nice short range throw that's mm -hmm. still kind of wide, but then also can really, you can see a little bit further at long range. So those, a lot of those have the TIR, TIR lenses in there. So it gives you that nice hot spot that throws out a long way and mm -hmm. a good flood to see what's around you. Now, look, there are, there are companies out there, I think maybe T-Rex Arms is one of them, but they make these extenders yeah. for your lights. That's so cool. So you can just pop that on your rail and then it goes whoop and put yep. your flashlight way further out to get I rid think, of that shadow. Uh, the other company I saw that makes that type of stuff, Arisaka, Arisaka. I believe makes some of those kind of extended mounts right. you can get as well. So I've got the old M300s and M600s that aren't dual fuel. They're just powered by CR123s and they did not come with articulating mounts like these newer ones. I've had them for several years and I purchased Arisaka mounts for them to kind of get them, them the spec. close to that rail and keep everything nice and tight. And one thing too, if you're gonna order a, a nice flashlight, you really wanna have a nice pressure pad for it as well. Mm -hmm. And I prefer the Surefires that have the uh, constant on switch on and off, plus a momentary pad on mm -hmm. them as well. That way you get the best of both worlds. It's a nice compact uh, you know, package. It drops right on the rail without any rubber bands or tape or any crazy stuff like that. Um, they're expensive, yes, but God, do they work? They're Man. great. You know? They're great. I do, I do like the Surefires. And it's also worth mentioning too, you know, I really do like the Mod Light stuff and the Cloud Defensive Owls. Those are great. Uh, Jacob bought a Cloud Defensive Owl. He's got it on his Mark 18. Hey, very capable setup. Very capable setup. Mm -hmm. It almost has a sort of a D-ball like function. The way it looks on the gun, it, it almost sits on the rail like a D-ball. So if you're not going to use a D-ball, not, that's not for everybody and it's not fitting for every application, um, it is a very handy location to be able to turn mm. it on and off and manipulate it and it's got a good bit of output. Mm. Uh, they do represent a considerable investment. Uh, the mod lights are nice as well. Uh, they do have an outstanding product. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really, really high quality lights. Mm. But I think overall, just for, let's say, form and function and availability and price, you know, I, I do like the Surefires quite well, and mm -hmm. I've, I've got several Surefires, and they've generally held up pretty dang good. Mm -hmm. So I guess the long-winded way to say it is that the next thing after your optic would be to get into a good weapons light. So, like you I said... you got to be able to see. Yes, in the situations <laughs> that you'll find yourself in, you need to be able to not only 
see your target, but also, most importantly, identify your target. Okay? That's right. You want to identify friendlies, you want to identify foes, oh, right? Yeah. Because accidents happen, they have happened, they happen quite often, yep. you know, and it's just a matter of misidentification or not knowing what your target is before you take that shot. And it's tragic in most cases. It really is. Yeah. Something else I want to mention too, when we're talking about flashlights, I really do like that power tack headlamp too. Um, he and okay. I have been running them. We, we got a few of them in and we actually filmed a, a bow fishing video. It hasn't been released yet. So I'm not going to spill the beans. You can't. But, yeah. Well, I can't spill the beans yet because <laughs> it's not, it's not released yet, but we went down and we were filming a bow fishing video and we used those headlamps for lighting the entire night and we we're out for several hours and a headlamp is an overlooked accessory that I think can really come in useful in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're on the side of the road and you've got to, you know, uh, look at something on your vehicle or change a tire or, or, you know, you need your hands available to do whatever, manipulate something. It's headlamps are super handy. So I know it's not necessarily related, you know, just to kitting out your gun, but headlamps are a great option mm -hmm. for some of you that may not, maybe you don't want a weapons light, but you just want something you can stick on and, and use mm -hmm. for searching around the home or, or checking things out. I mean, it's just, they do have their place. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in a tactical defensive situation, but don't overlook headlamps because they are very useful as well. So, right. so after, you know, sling, magazines, mm -hmm. ammunition, lighting, mm -hmm. optics, that's all you need. The video's done. Yeah. Right? Stop accessorizing. <laughs> Stop it. Stop yeah. hanging all kinds of crap off your gun. Stop it. You know, you bring up a really good point because Chad and I have always talked about how when you start, I hate to throw oh. shade on Glock. Look, <laughs> I love Glock pistols. All right. I do not want to make this a pissing match about Glock fanboys or, or anything. We carry them all the time. I love I mean, Glocks. I love MMPs. I love SIGs. Look, yeah. I'm a gun guy. I, lo I love everything for certain reasons. But I will say that Glocks tend to be the worst offender when it comes to changing crap out. Oh, you start man. throwing a bunch of random crap on the gun and messing around with them. And they don't ever work with the mantra of reliability that Glocks are known for. I mean, Glocks <laughs> are known for being really reliable pistols. And yeah. With all people, the stock components. <laughs> some people may not like the triggers on them or the sights or, uh, or whatever feature they may or may not enjoy the most about a Glock. Mm -hmm. But generally, I've always figured, all right, you take a Glock, you put some good night sights on it. That's it. I mean, you know, like, don't go changing a bunch of crap. So the way I would segue into what he just talked mm -hmm. about if the gun doesn't shoot good stock, don't, you know what I mean? Like, don't go too far down the rabbit hole. Now, like, look, may, maybe you need another gun. Like, maybe that's <laughs> not the right maybe, gun. Maybe, maybe you, you need bought some the training. wrong thing. No, you know? Maybe you need some training. Yeah, may, maybe, it's, it's, maybe it's you, not the gun. But, or maybe it's just not the right gun for you in the first place, and, and you just didn't hey, know. You know uh, I don't know. Mr. Lovell, hi. Yes, um, I, I'm, I'm not doing too well with my Glock. It doesn't fit my hand very well. Do you have a class for that? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to catch so much hell for that. Oh, uh, here, here's the thing. Here's Love the you, thing. John. Love you a long time. John is a surgeon with a Glock. He is. And his Glocks are a little, little pony out a little bit. And, and it fits his hand really and well. And it does fit his hand quite well. And I've shaken his hand. It's, I've, it's I've, a very well, unique hand. I've, I've done other things. And, and the hands. beer, too, you know. But anyway. All right. Let's not go there. The point Woo! is, the point is, know when to stop. Yes. Okay, know Jeez. what accessories are gonna accomplish your mission and your goals and what are gonna fit your budget, mm -hmm. but know when to, when to say, you know what, this thing's legit, right? You took it out to the range, you got it sighted in, man, everything's working great, this thing's awesome. Don't go throwing a bunch of horse crap on it. That you, I mean, look, you do what you want. I'm not saying don't, don't buy what, you buy what you want. Every, I get it. You Sometimes, do you. Sometimes, what's, look. What's the words some, that you live by? You do you. You do you. Right? <laughs> But at the end of the day, though, God. sometimes it's cool to have a Gucci gun that's just all kitted out with every little, you know, thing on it. That is cool. Now, would I put that on the bedside for life and liberty? Mm, maybe not. Okay. I, I, for, for defensive purposes, I prefer Look. a little more stock. As stock as I can and still accomplish the purpose because the less variables that you introduce in the situation, the less of a, of a chance you're gonna have some potential issue mm -hmm. when you need that uh, gun to work. I'm gonna make a really bad joke, but you can put it on the bedside, just don't knock it off. 
<laughs> oh, oh! You, mean, you mean the Gucci gun? Oh, no, the Gucci gun. <laughs> with the gun light was, trigger? <laughs> with the light trigger and like, I swear on Glocks, you start changing out springs, instead of introducing one new variable, you've introduced like 10. Right. Like, because then you, you've got to change everything else. If you change one thing, you have to go down the full gamut and change everything to fine tune it again. It's like, it's not worth it when your life is at stake, okay? If it's something that you're gonna carry all the time. Yeah. Unless you have vetted that thing just intensely. We have a separate video completely <laughs> on God. the concept of vetting your equipment. So yes. if you wanna check that gun gripe out, check it out. We have a whole episode on vetting your equipment and some of the things you wanna look at. Ding, ding, shambles plug, ding. But here's the thing. Um, at the end of the day, right, there are accessories. Okay, like yes. you look at the Flux, all right, the M17 Flux. Yes. Now that is an accessory that, sure, that's a pretty major accessory for a pistol because you're kind of mm -hmm. really just, you know, completely cha you know, using a chassis, right? right? You know, or like the BNT chassis mm -hmm. where you're taking a, a pistol and you have an SBR or something. Now that's a little different because then you're taking something that is incredibly useful and just making it all oh, that much more useful. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying that accessorizing a Glock is a bad idea. Just choose your accessories carefully. Mm -hmm. And, and that's not just Glock, that's any pistol, right? You, I mean, point in case, the Flux uses the M17 SIG. So the same could be said that, all right, you start throwing uh, your gun on all these random chassis or something, hang a bunch of crap off of it, is it gonna continue to work? Well, let the results be the judge. If you take it out and you shoot it, you're like, wow, this thing's awesome, and you put five or 600 rounds or a thousand rounds through it and it's working great, you don't have a single issue, mm -hmm. chances are you're gonna be okay, but, but always, then you're gonna be like Tim Hormson and fire that next round and everything is gonna break. That's right, yeah. Round 1001 is the one that croaks the gun. You know, that's been happening more with us lately too. I think like, oh, we've caught something from Tim, I guess, I don't know. I'm telling Man. you, every time Kim, Tim comes around, it, we, we, yeah, you're right. It's like, it le it's he, like leaves, a disease. he leaves a little bit behind, like it's his aura <laughs> and it like soaks into some of my rifles and stuff and it starts to happen, you know? God <laughs> almighty. But here's the thing, hopefully this video gave you a little bit of food for thought about, you know, sort of the importance and, and the mindset of like why you accessorize things and, you know, hopefully that puts you a little bit closer where you need to All right. be. And then also the lesson in this video is please finish accessorizing the first gun before you buy nine more that are just the same. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Lord start, almighty. Start a project, finish it. Move on to the next one. Man, check out all my AR-15s. Like, man, that one's missing a handguard. Yeah, man, I'm working on <laughs> I that. I finished it, yeah. I'm working on that, dude. I, I got a trade in the works right now. <laughs> Look, we're God. all fallible. <laughs> like, I get it. Look, the only reason I we get could, it. The only reason we could talk about this is because we've done this. <laughs> yeah. We're very guilty of it, so. Um, oh, man. Anyway, th this gripe kind of just came through tried and true, and, and this was just something we were legitimately complaining yeah. about with each other. And so we thought we would share the, our mindset with this. Poking you know. fun to each other, yeah. too. So, so. Um, you know, get your gun out, <laughs> finish it, finish it, move <laughs> on. All right. So uh, thank you guys very much for the support. Uh, we appreciate all of our Patreon supporters mm -hmm. for supporting our videos. Thank you so very much. Also, go over to Ballistic Inc. And pick yourself up a snazzy t-shirt. That's one way you can support our channel if you wish. Uh, and we really appreciate that. All those funds go right back into supporting the channel and putting out content like this. Have yourself a great day. Finish accessorizing your rifle, and we'll see you next time. Matt's going to get on to us because we are not very good at advertising our wares. Are We're we? really not. Yeah, I'm not We're wearing Ballistic Gang t-shirts. But I promise the Ballistic Gang t-shirts are amazing, <laughs> and you should buy them. All right. Have a great day. Many more on the way. Uh, we'll see you soon. See you guys.